that are able to stand. We will open our Bibles and the book of Micah, the prophet Micah, Micah, the, the prophet Micah. We will project for the ones that are not having their Bibles with them. Micah, it's a difficult book to find in the Bible because it's a small book. It's better to start looking from the, the end of the Old Testament. Have you found Micah chapter 2, verse number 10? One verse only. Let's help our guests or we'll be projected. Amen. Let's read. Arise and depart. For this is not your rest because it is defiled. It shall destroy, yes, with utter destruction. The church may be seated. Braden, last week we had a very important event for our institution, an event that brought a message of warning, a message that was, and it is, within everything that we are living in this world and also within what was revealed prophetically in the Bible. When we look in the situation of the mankind and we can see the global happenings, everything that is occurring around the world and is bringing concern to everybody so the mankind is preoccupied with it and as more these concerns come as more people are concerned and feeling this yoke this weight in the search of solution for certain problems the man have a risk to depart or to get distant from God more and more. Uh, we are living moments of uncertainty, fear, doubts for everything. So we see the looking around us, everything that is prophesied in the Bible. We could be here all night long talking about earthquakes, Tsunamis, wars, rumors of wars, typhoons, and hurricanes. We had two in very short period of time. So all of these is bringing confirmation of what the Bible mentioned and also brings upon the humanity a spirit of fear. We might talk about also the lack of love that is around the world and many other tragedies. Terrorism, sometimes people use their own faith, not the faith that comes from the God, the genuine one not the faith that comes from eternity and brings the man back to eternity, but he uses his beliefs to justify wars, attacks, terrorism, and evil. So some people do that. We see that. So this event that we had last week 
it's being useful not only for the church but for the the world and for the non-believers as well because the church is the chairman of a message we have a message and it's not ours because it's not a property of the denomination the church as a as a company but this message comes from god and believe it or not if you want it or not whatever is in this message what is coming from the mouth of god will happen if you want or not the mankind is provoking an acceleration of these prophecies to be fulfilled the way that he governs the way that the mankind manages the world it's a defeatful way and this is being accelerated expedited through the the nature the green the sea and interesting that the passage that we just read talks about some warnings from God and also some emphasis that is given by God and this needs to be applied in the life of the church arise and depart for this is not your rest why not because it is defiled it shall destroy the corruption that destroys rapidly greatly and we see some topics in this passage because the church of god needs to leave what is in the bible simply preaching the gospel or carry a bible or having the bible verses by heart or announcing and not leaving speaking but not uh talking but not walking is doesn't worthwhile so that's why tonight god brings us this verse this passage this message a message where the holy spirit surely is already working in our hearts as for the church awaits for one day the day the church of god the faithful church she is anxious waiting of a very important event and this is the rapture of the church and when this happen it will be a normal day apparently it's going to look like any ordinary day people will wake up normally they will do what they quotidian used to they will leave the bed first thing of uh, obviously check the cell phone now in our days the first thing we do after we open our eyes in the morning is to check the the cell phone so then they have their breakfast manage the kids going to school or maybe a holiday or a vacation any ordinary day there will be nothing special that day apparently and the bible says that nobody knows when this will happen bible is clear saying even the son jesus don't know only the father it's a mystery that is kept in god's economy in god's secret but by faith we know that this day will happen indeed the rapture can be done collectively when the holy spirit take off the church and rapture there them to eternity and and one hour one week one year 10 years from now on 
God knows when this happened. This will happen. But one thing we know. The rapture individually can happen any time. Because the man doesn't live much. Because we have a very limited life. Our, when our biologic watch happened in the last century, second, uh, second that the, 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 the clock passes, for some the life will be ending. Whoever has Jesus in their hearts will live by the word based on the instructions, listen to the voice of, of the Lord, opening their hearts so the Holy Spirit can control. These will be taken off to live eternally with God. How Enoch was raptured, Elijah was raptured as well. So when this moment arrived, that will be our first day. So Micah brings us Micah, Micah brings us a, an advertisement, like a, a warning. So the servant of God needs to be standing. So the man was not created to be the tail, but to be a head to be a conqueror and to win all the battles, all the struggles, because God assures us that in Jesus we are more than conquerors. And that's why the church of God is, needs to be in this position, standing. Because this is our position. Because this is how the Lord has brought us. God has taken us away from uh, eternal damnation. And now we are arised, ar uh, standing. We cannot walk with the spirit of defeat. In Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Our battles, we always have them. We will always have them. But we count on the victory. The faithful church... He enters in the battle with the victory in his hands. Many times a servant prays and asks the Lord to remove the, the, from the trials and struggles. But it's part of our role. So Joseph, Daniel, and all the friends, they are there. They were there. And they went through furnace, the lion's den, Moses in the Egypt, but was there that the Lord provided their victories. And within their battles and struggles, the servant of God conquers because we are standing. And this is the position of the church. It's a position that we are always glorifying the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's taking too long. Yes, but by our point of view but in the right moment the Lord is providing the victory in the right moment the, the rain will go away the storms will pass because the Lord has a word of power so the first warning is arise is the posture is the position of the church and the second one is depart arise and depart you need to be in in this position. You need to be up to desiring to march it in to the victory, towards the victory. There is a way. There is an, an order to never stop, to keep going. We need to be keep going to be with Jesus. As we walk in Jesus, as we walk toward Him, the tribes and struggles got left behind. The enemy 
cannot follow us because we are in a pace of a destiny which is eternal, eternal life. We know where we're coming from. We know where we are. And we know very well where we're going. Servant of the Lord knows. Our destiny is the eternal life with Jesus, with God. So the one that fears the Lord walks toward eternity and we cannot stop. Every day. It's a new blessing. The yesterday's blessing was good for yesterday and the today's is for today's and tomorrow we're going to search for a new one. And more promises need to be fulfilled in our lives. The church walks in this way with this animosity defined desiring to walk and how we walk with our mind set and our knowledge that here is not our rest in this world we are conscient about it we are not deceitful we are not deceited and we are not here permanently but we are here temporarily we are strangers in this world before we belong to the world and to the sin to the enemy of our lives the prince of this world but now we have the knowledge and we are conscious about what was given to us here is not our place of rest we are not confirmed with this world we don't want this world we don't feel joyfully here we're not satisfied because we know here is not our place it's not the, our place of rest we need to work yes sometimes take a break yes it's part of it but knowing that any time our names will be called and that's why this warning from God's side for us tonight he is not a pl place of rest because of the corruption here's the warning because of the corruption I'm not talking about the government I'm talking about the spirit of corruption which is natural for the humankind and the life of every and any man what takes the mankind to distance from God the, the weight of the sin what men do far from God apart from the presence of the Holy Spirit this is what finishes the mankind this is what consumes and destroys the man and this is destroying the world and this is destroying the whole humanity the corruption the sin the absence of God disobedience to God to God's voice the origin of the sin is that when Adam his sin was to disobey God's voice Eve as well Adam and Eve so when the man is in this way his heart is being corrupted his heart or her heart soul mind is being destroyed day after day and they are approaching to the eternal damnation which is death and what is awaiting for us is something very important that's why tonight God is saying to us this is the way that the church will conquer why, why are we waiting it's a rapture of the church is the day where we will see all our efforts it's when we're gonna see everything we have done in favor of the work of the Holy Spirit and the gospel for salvation where we will see the confirmation that everything that we have done is not in vain and this will be the day that will be with the Lord forever this will be the greatest day of the church terrific day of the church 
great, terrific for us, that has and terrible for the world because they do not have the salvation. They will face the judgment. That's why God is telling us tonight, this is the best way for you to win and the only way because the, the judgment that is upon the world that will take the man to eternal damnation make, will make us as a faithful church to approach God the same judgment we will see we are following the fulfilling of the prophecies and this same judgment that is upon the world it's upon everybody but for us it will be a judgment for life we're going to be set free we're going to see the gates of heaven being opened and we will see as a body, as a church, faithful church, will be in the arms of our Savior. That's why tonight, he is the message from the Lord. This warning, solemnly warning from the Lord. <coughs> Those are warnings that allow us to get closer to God. I don't know how your life is being. I don't know how you are being prepared for that. No, I don't know. But tonight, no matter what you have done, starting now, you can change, you can shift your destiny, your, your progress, and you can lift up your head and start walking with God. As the mankind is dying every day, starting today, you can count your days for eternal life. Amen? They, may the Lord bless us. Let's listen to a song.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Brethren, we are standing still, firm, without deviating from, for, for the left or for the right, because the few days that are left are days of victories in the presence of God. As for soon, we will see the glory of God, what the church desire most is to be in the arms of the Savior. And this is what you want. See the gates of heaven opening and where we will be eternally in the arms of our Savior. Let's stand. Let's have a word of praise to the Lord. Lord, we adore your name, O oh God, as for tonight. We can hear your sweet voice speaking to our hearts. Good it is to listen your advices, O oh Lord. And how good it will be when you coming back to rescue us. And you're going to find us in this position. And we bless you. As for you are the only one that worth our praises and, and adoration. Our gratitude and praises. How good it is to serve your Lord. To be in your house. Giving you all gratitude and praises. You have given us everything and all things. And your hands are stretched upon us. You are the one that is involving our souls, giving us victories. And one day you have found us. And we, you are allowing us to be more than conquerors in your presence. And that's why we are happy. Because you are a living God, God of power infinitely love upon us we can feel your care upon us and that's why we thank you for everything especially for our lives standing in your holy presence we bless you we adore you in the name of Jesus amen as we pray for this service beforehand the Lord showed tonight it will be a night of salvation where the Lord will give us new chances for the ones that one day have walked in the gospel but left, for the ones that is not giving any value to the salvation in Jesus. My brother, my sister, tonight is a special night, a night of definition. The Lord is present among us. You have come to the house of God. And here there, there will be excessively amount of food. And we have the table of the Lord. And we receive from the hands of the eternal shepherd, which is Jesus, whatever we need for our lives. The cares and the benefits of salvation. The Lord is talking about some families that are in difficult moments and the Lord is showing that he's taking care of everything. The couple, the marital life, the relationship between parents and children. God is assuring us that we are not deceitful. We, not, we are not being in deceit. Here in the church, in his presence, is the blessed place that we can be. There's no other place. There's no other way to serve him. But only in His presence, the living God, God of Israel, that we can be sure about where we're going to live eternally. And God is showing, especially a man that used to live in the gospel of Jesus, but 
as a result of his choices, bad choices, or the lifestyle, he lost that. And the Lord is giving him an opportunity tonight. So grab that with all your strength and come living the salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray, finishing this service. Bendizemos, Senhor, o Teu nome, porque nós temos recebido do Senhor a pérola de grande valor. We bless you as for the salvation in Jesus is priceless. The world, we don't belong to the world. We don't owe anything to the world because the high price was paid. If we are here tonight, It's because we were saved by Jesus. We were victorious in Jesus. And this is what makes us rejoice. This is what makes us to come back to your presence all the time. Receive our adoration, our service of gratitude, and give us a blessing week in your presence. This is our prayer, thanking you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. We would like to invite the workers and the deacons that are participating on the Zoom to be alert, to assist. And we are here offering ourselves available to assist you, to pray for you and with you after the service. If you need any clarification about what was preached tonight, we are here at your disposition, the deacons, the pastors, the workers, the ladies, to help you in all your needs. So see you can here you can see the invitation for the next event with our adolescents. So let's be praying. And we all will be here. Whoever is coming will be assisted in the best way possible. So everybody can be helped and assisted in the best way. Our service, special service will be Saturday night and Sunday morning, this special event. I say to you all, peace of the Lord.